sitting, sitting at the machines, just pushing the buttons, pushing, pushing, pushing the buttons for hours, for hours, for hours on end. A major difference between drug addiction and alcohol addiction and gambling is that gambling can occur in individuals of 55 and over. In other words, if you don't smoke or drink or do these things by 21 years, you're probably not going to become a drug addict or an alcoholic, but gambling, you may never have gambled in your life. And then when you retire, you're bored, and, 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 and you start going to casinos, and you become addicted uh, because it's acceptable and it's now accessible uh, in, in our country. All the life factors, you've lost a spouse, you're lonely, and, and, and uh, lack of knowledge about compulsive gambling makes you very vulnerable to gambling uh, when, when you become a senior citizen. We've got people calling us on our hotline saying they've been married for 50 years, and now their wife or their husband losing all their money at the casino. Uh, the casinos regularly send buses to nursing homes and senior citizens to pick them up, and, and, and they, they got a term they call the third of the month, but right after Social Security checks come out. Uh, in Atlantic City, 375,000 buses a year take senior citizens. Uh, here's a lesson for the church. One lady said, when I walk into a casino, they know my name, they know what I like to eat, they know what I like to drink, they, give me, they treat me like a queen. You know, that's a, a pretty good lesson for the church. What well, used to be one of America's premier convention cities now attracts busloads of senior citizens who spend their day at the slots and then leave before dark, and then a different crowd comes in, uh, in in the evenings. Many develop urinary tract infections because they don't want to use the restroom for fear they'll lose their slot machine to someone else. In fact, one lady uh, left her slot machine. Somebody came in one, and she accused her machine of infidelity. <laughs> I mean, that's that's a true statement, people. So what happens? What happens, people, I'm not making this up, they literally, they literally wear depends because they will not leave the machine. If that's not an addiction, young people. Now this one, you know, it's the targeting our youth. They're targeting our young people, my, my grandchildren. And, and the who's social fit, one of these little ones, which believe in me, were better for him than the military. He was drowned into the depths of the sea. Uh, Matthew tells us, the average age children's first gambling experience is 11 years old. More children today gamble than use drugs or alcohol in, in, in our country. That's from Harvard. The survey Jerry and I did, over 400 teenagers, these were Christian schools and church youth groups. These are Christian. 49% of them said someone in their family whom they consider to be a Christian buys lottery tickets regularly. Uh, uh, 29% said that they bet on sports within the last year, and 49% said they played Texas Hold'em poker within the last year. Again, these are our Christian teenagers. These are not the an Australian Psychological Society study revealed that the household exposure to gambling by adults, particularly fathers, increased the risk that children would develop gambling problems later in life. First uh, Thessalonians tells us people abstain from the very appearance of evil. And then secondly, he says, what parents do in moderation. What parents do in moderation, we may buy a lottery ticket, and what do we say to our kids? It's okay to gamble. It's okay to gamble. Then our kids grow up, and they take to the next level. An uh, advertisement that, again, aimed at the poor people. This is one Chicago. How to get to Washington Boulevard to Easy Street and just buy a lottery ticket. This could be your ticket out. Um, no matter what you do for a living, there's an easier way to make money. Again, these are all uh, aimed toward poor, uh, the poor. And the Bible says, again, anyone who presses the poor is insulting God who made them to help the poor and honor God. And then gambling is wrong biblically because it's irresponsible stewardship. Moreover, the Bible says, according to steward that a man be found faithful, gambling is a prostitution of God-given assets which should be used to glorify God and advance His kingdom. Casinos, lotteries, and other gambling providers manipulate the misunderstanding of odds to entice and exploit gambling. If a gamer craps and the gambler bets one dollar a time, the odds of winning a thousand dollars for loot thousand is one in two trillion. The odds of winning a mega uh, buck jackpot are seventeen million to one. So is that where God wants us to put our money? Uh, now this is kind of interesting. The mathematician at Stanford University basically said, "Here's the comparison to win the lottery. If you take an ant." You spray yellow paint, put the ant in the middle of a football field, and blindfold somebody and put them out there with a the pin and, and, and the blindfold. And if they get the pin in the ant, that's the same chance you got of winning the lottery. Uh, so that's, uh, I don't know if that's true or not, but he must spend a lot of time researching that. Gambling is wrong biblically because it breeds addiction. Uh, the ABCs of gambling are addiction, 
bankruptcy, and crime. With lottery, with a full-blown casino, uh, any type of gambling people, uh, uh, these three things are the result. Technology has given us two devices that allow us to throw away our money with the pull of a handle. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Did you hear about the gambler who went to Las Vegas in a $50,000 Cadillac and returned in a $250,000 Greyhound? Uh, unfortunately, people, <laughs> that's, that's, that, that's truer than we want it to be. Now, how do you become addicted? Well, the three ways. Number one, if we lose, what happens? We Try to get it back. <laughs> Number two, if we win, we think we can duplicate that again. This is easy money. And the third way to, to, to uh, become addicted is simply to play because people are addicted just to the action of gambling. Leaving out. Matter of fact, some people they don't even like to stop and get money if they win because it, 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 they want to keep gambling. They don't want to stop because they're so addicted. Compulsive gamblers will bet until nothing is left. Savings. Family assets, personal belongings, anything you buy that may be pawned, sold, or borrowed against, they will borrow from co workers, credit unions, family, and friends, but will rarely admit for gambling. They will take personal loans, write bad checks, ultimately reach the past the point of bankruptcy, and desperation, post gamblers, then panic, and turn to illegal activity to support them. These people I read you about, you wouldn't know them because they might be sitting right next to you. I mean, these are not hardened criminals, these are common church secretaries and and, and, and the soccer moms, and, and they get so addicted, then they turn to, to, to crime. Pastor, this lady used to go to Stone Church. <laughs> that Jerry and I got her testimony and said that even though I trusted Christ as my Savior and regularly attended church, I was in bondage to compulsive gambling. During the offerings, I struggled to give even a minimum offering. Tithing was not even an option for me, as every penny was needed to cover old due bills and future gambling at the local casinos. Each Sunday, shame and guilt ruled my life. Each pathological gambler costs the public $13,600 per year. Each pathological gambler. The economic benefit, uh, and again, now we know uh, the new mayor of Chicago wants a casino. Uh, the Illinois lawmakers are trying to pass a bill now that gave Illinois five more casinos. We got ten. We got ten now, and they solved all of our problems, so now we want five more. Uh, the economic benefit is 50 to $7 per, per, per citizen. The economic cost is $108. So I know I'm not an economist, but it seems to me that that's not a real good way uh, to solve a, an economic problem. Dr. Mark Griffith of University of Nottingham says that manufacturers deliberately designed the slot machines to be addictive. They, they know that by spraying machines with certain smells, they can increase the take. A research shows that people gamble more under red lights than blue lights. And, and, and so again, they, they, uh, uh, a player thinks that past wins or losses are predictive of future wins or losses. I'm bound to win the next time. But however, the reality is that each pull of the slot machine or push of the button has an equal probability of payout. Each pull is independent of the previous pull. So if you keep flipping a coin and you don't get heads, you pick you up the next time, the next time, well, that's not true. Every, every time it's an independent time. Uh, they program machines so that the reels come up to the matching and then one reel is almost, almost and you think you almost won. And so you, you, you think, well, I almost made it. Uh, why do people continue playing slot machines despite the fact that constantly, on a psychological level, they don't constantly win or uh, lose? They nearly win. Uh, again, that's all, that's all manipulation. Uh, the slot machines are called the crack cocaine of, uh, of gambling. Pastor, who is that that prayed for sun to stand still? Did that, can, you, can you do that and make the clock stop or no. make the sun stand still? 1991 to 2002, 4,994 people killed themselves in Nevada. Now, do the math. That's over one a day. That's over one, one a day commit suicide. Matter of fact, I just read again this morning. In 1999, one of the casinos in, uh, in, uh, in, in Atlantic City, they used to have the, the glass doors out into balconies. Because so many people were jumping off, they literally sealed the doors permanently shut so they can't go out on, on the balconies anymore. Uh, the first trip, someone says the casino is voluntary. The second one isn't. Uh, here's what a casino does to an area. It just takes out all the all the money out, out of an area. Uh, bankruptcy rates are 18% uh, percent higher uh, in communities with, uh, with the, uh, casinos. Okay, Abraham, this is my final uh, sentence of the king of Sodom. Remember the story when Abraham went and retrieved a lot and, uh, and uh, the, the king's offering money and Abraham said, no, I don't want to take anything because you'll say, you made me rich. Well, as Christians, as Christians,
Christians. Uh, the world cannot hurt the Christian. The world cannot help the Christian. God's our provider. Isaiah 31, uh, God reprimands the Israelites from going to Egypt for help. Christian participate in any form of game, indicates living the world system, sort of, and it indicates a lack of trust in the Lord. Again, people say, well, as long as you're not addicted, it's okay to you own know, casually. Well, here's where your money's going. It's going to an industry that uses exploitation, involves predatory actions, or students' parasitic qualities, epitomizes greed. And it's going to an industry that breeds addiction, that causes corruption, that thrives on our subject, and defies biblical principles. So is that where you want your money going, people? Uh, I, don't, uh, I don't think so. And finally, finally, he that is greedy of gain troubled his own house. Dishonest money brings grief to all of the family, and uh, it's all about the money, people. Uh, the, uh, the one scripture Proverbs in the Living Bible says that uh, the wealth gotten by gambling quickly disappears, and research says that within five years, people who win lotteries, 90% of them are totally broke. Within five years, within five years.